Here we go. Beautiful, lovely. Okay. I should probably have water. I'm going to get some water. Hi friends. I um, have a new setup here and it's not quite as spooky as I would like it to be. I would rather be sitting in a creepy old chair sipping hot cocoa and telling you all about this DIY cauldron. But in an effort to improve the sound quality of my videos, I'm going to be talking into a microphone, which it actually sounds very good to me. So hopefully it will sound good to you. We'll find out when I edit. Here we go. If you're new here, my name is Brooke and I do tutorials on DIY crafts, thrifting, home decor, sometimes we bake, and today we are sticking it to the man. We're really doing a DIY cauldron, but this is my way of sticking it to corporate America. <laughs> I don't know if they'll notice, but it makes me feel better. Michael's and Hobby Lobby especially, they're kind of known for ripping off independent artists. And when I went to Michael's a few months ago, they had like a spooky dollhouse section specifically. And there was a bathtub that was like filled with resin with a squid tentacle. You may not follow her, but Southern Gothic Dollhouse created this. And Michael's clearly ripped it off. And if I were her, I would be livid. Oh, it just drives me crazy. Anyway, they have a Halloween collection that is very much in line with a big demographic. They have like a earthy kind of primitive witch collection. And in that collection, there is a cauldron that is so cute. And I actually couldn't find it anywhere else online. So I think this is a Michael's original. And so since they like to rip off independent artists, I thought we would rip off their art. So here we go. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start with the frog because that's where I started. And you definitely don't have to sculpt an original frog if you don't want to. I am just so picky and I have something in my mind and so I just have to make everything. But you can thrift little frog figurines if you can find one that works. You can buy some online little like frog statues or you can use like little plastic frogs if you're going to do like a lighter version of this. I feel like this deserves a much longer tutorial than you probably want to watch in this video, but I basically am starting with a rough base and just building onto it. So it's kind of the same way that you would draw something. You would start with those rough circle shapes uh, for the torso and the head and the arms and legs. You kind of just sketch it out. I sculpt in a very similar way. I start with a mound for the body, add on the head, add on that gullet. Is it called a gullet on a frog? I'll have to look that one up. But just adding all of like the thicker parts first, and then you can add on the limbs, add on the hands and feet last. These are the feet and I'm doing them separate. Just use like whatever tools you can find. I use the back of a paintbrush and my fingers and just kind of smooth everything out.
for the eyes, I am using, this is actually a leather, like a button press. It's kind of got a concave area. So it just makes like a perfect, it keeps that concave shape, but pushes in a little bit. So that worked for me. If you have something, just try and be like resourceful with the things that you have lying around already. No need to buy a million tools. You just have to be kind of innovative and use things in a creative way. You want to find a container that is wide enough so that there's a little bit of wiggle room. He cannot be touching the edge because then it, your mold is going to be paper thin there. So cut off the bottom, make sure it sits flush, flush? I don't know if it's flush or flesh. Flesh makes sense. Make sure, I think it's flush. Make sure it's sitting flush to the tabletop and then cut off the top. And then I just grabbed cardboard. You can glue this to anything that's just kind of disposable. Um, this is just a piece of cardboard off of a box, but I am using hot glue to make a seal all the way around the outside of my mold and attach it to the cardboard surface. You're also going to add glue to the bottom of your frog and then press him down as firm as you can. Try not to break him but make sure that he's sitting flush to the bottom as well. It's okay if he's not completely down there. If some mold gets in, you can cut it off, but you know, just to reduce any waste. So with all of these mold kits that I have used, they are just equal amounts. So you pour half of one and half of the other. And I find the best way to do this is with a food scale. That way you only need one vessel and it's much more accurate if you weigh something as opposed to trying to look at like a volume measurement. And then make sure that you actually pour enough. I ended up using almost the entire package and I had to remix this a few times. And this is sped up quite a bit. I think this is sped up like 600%. I poured this very, very slowly to allow any air bubbles to escape. I think this set in about an hour. It really doesn't take that long, but just follow the manufacturer's instructions. I think they usually say like a few hours. And see here, some of the mold did get under the frog, but I just am slicing it off. It looks like I'm going a little bit fast and loose here, <laughs> but this is also sped up. So I'm just removing any of this excess mold so that when I pour this, my pieces will come out much easier. So now I am going to create several of these frogs. And I guess for me, that is the benefit and it's worth the investment of actually like making a frog myself and molding it because now I can also use this for like chocolate molds. I think you're supposed to have like, oh, only things that are food should be used for food and things for arts and crafts. I feel like if you wash it, it's fine. <laughs> Plaster of Paris is very easy to work with. However, it is very, very brittle. And in the future, I would recommend doing maybe like a liquid cement. In fact, I will probably Go to the hardware store and get some liquid cement to see if that pours easy enough into this kind of mold but if you are putting a big pot or cauldron on top of these frogs you definitely want something very secure and i had a little bit of breakage issues with my plaster of paris and the plaster of Paris really does actually bubble up quite a bit and the bubbles get stuck. So this one, you really want to tap that mold, tap the bottom, tap the table, 
and try and get all of those air bubbles to surface because this is kind of a pain. In the end, I got some really good frogs out of it, and it is a very cheap material to use. So if you want to make many frogs, Plaster of Paris is great. And I coated them with Rub and Buff, which is a metallic, it's kind of like paint, but I think it's like an oil-based paint, and it's supposed to look very much like metal. Like I think that on the package it says nothing else looks like this. I have some Martha Stewart metallic paints and they're actually almost as good. So use whatever you want. You can also spray paint them. That's fine. Now we start on the pot. If you want to skip the frog and buy your frogs, this part I think we can all do. I got this from Lowe's. It was $15 in the garden section. It's just a pot. I'm giving it a light sanding just to make sure that the surface is a little bit even. This was kind of a heavily textured pot. And then I am sketching all of those arches. I quickly realized that it was a lot more difficult to space them evenly. So I just found something to kind of trace against and make sure that everything came out somewhat evenly. And then I just taped everything off with a bit of masking tape. And this is how I'm going to make sure that that bottom line is level. And this is just your guide for laying down the clay. So this is not like the finished result, obviously. I use paper clay. I've used creative paper clay for years. You can also make your own paper clay at home. There are recipes on YouTube. I found so many tutorials. I haven't done them myself and I wanted something pretty reliable for this, but you can get it for like, I think that small one is like $8 at Flick Art Supply. And I just rolled it out. It's an air dry clay. So you want to really make sure that you are keeping the part that you're not using moist, but I've also had it dry out on me and then I've been able to revive it with a little bit of water. So I rolled it out and then I used a ruler and an X-Acto knife to very gently cut out a thin strip. And I am just going over all of those markings that I made and you want to use a lot of water and this will stick. I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing how well it sticks to something that's like the same texture and paper clay and a terracotta pot are very similar in texture when they dry. So you just kind of want to wet the surface, lay it down, make a rough shape, and then add a little bit of water and smooth it out. Once you have all of your arches set, just go through and gently smooth everything out, kind of get that solid form that you want, make sure it's going to dry in the shape that you want. And you just have to have like that gentle but firm pressure. So for the details, doing moons is really great because it, they're a really easy shape. And if you have a round cookie cutter, that's all you need to create full moons and crescent moons and even half moons if you want. 
I decided to do kind of like a mirror moon phase on each side of the pot. So I have waning and waxing on each side of a full moon in the center. And I did that on both sides of the pot. So the easiest way to do this is just to dip the entire moon shape into water and stick it onto your pot and then gently but firmly um, kind of go over the edges and make sure that everything is kind of formed is kind of forming a seal. You make the crescents, you just take that same circle cutter and cut into it just slightly. And then for the extreme crescents, you just cut in a little bit more. If you do have a star cookie cutter, you can do the same thing, rolling out a thin piece of clay and then cutting out those stars. And we're just going to do the same thing, dip them in water and attach them wherever you want. I actually sketched out a couple of stars on my pot so I would know where I wanted to place them. So I let my pot dry overnight, make sure everything is secure and firm, and then I went in with a Dremel, and this takes a pretty steady hand, so I recommend just getting your clay placed as precisely as you can, um, but if you are really good with a Dremel, you could actually carve out a lot of this, and you could do it that way instead of adding clay, you can create indentations with the moons and the arches and just dremel it all out. I'll leave that to you, but it's another option. I have to say I coated this in Mod Podge because I thought it would be a brilliant idea. <laughs> and it was not. It really like created a layer that ended up peeling up. So I would maybe put Mod Podge around your clay moons and your arches and stars but don't cover the entire pot in it. It just doesn't, it doesn't adhere properly. You can just go ahead and paint directly onto your pot and painted the entire pot in a Martha Stewart acrylic paint. It's called Beetle Black. It really didn't take much to cover this entire pot. And then once that is completely dry, I went in with the rub and buff again and just covered all of the stars and moons. Less is more, I have found with this. And you just have to kind of sweep it to the edges. Once everything is dry, you can go ahead and set your pot down. And I initially thought I was going to do four frogs, but three actually work so much better. So here's the second attempt. And in the end, I added little wooden feet to the pot. And then 
realized that I wanted it to sit kind of into the frog's backs. And so I took the Dremel out and carved out a space so that it would actually sit into the back of the frog. So keep in mind if you do this in this order that the plaster is actually good because it's easy to be carved. I don't know how hard it is to carve into concrete. So hopefully you watch to the end before you attempt to do this yourself. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun doing this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. If you want more content, you can follow me on TikTok at Brooke Darwin. And I'm on Instagram at It's Brooke Darwin, because some weird account has my name. Be sure to subscribe here for more Halloween DIYs. I have an entire list in my notes section of my phone full of so many spooky things. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I am so excited to like kick off Halloween season. I feel like now that I'm like getting this out, we can officially begin. So stick around because there's more coming. There's so much more coming. I think that's it. Happy Halloween officially and I'll see you next week.